happy 4th of July, I guess, to all the white people or people who just don't get how bad this country is. But don't worry, I have 10 ideas that can get this country the best for everyone who lives here. Stick around! So we all know that energy is a big deal, like the world's going to end in 12 years, and I guess maybe now it's even 11 and a half years. So we really need to get on board. Now, maybe some of my ideas might seem radical, but they're hard to disagree with when you really, really think about them. So let's just get started. The first, the first thing, there's a lot of people in this country, and I think that that's probably not a very good thing. There are countries out there that have a child limit, and I don't think it's necessarily the worst idea. So abortions should be often and free. Let's really utilize that and let's make sure that most people, when they, when they accidentally get pregnant, because I mean, I don't even know if we know how people get pregnant anymore. It's a mystery. So when they do get pregnant, they should be able to get as many abortions as they want. They can have one kid, one. Already we have less people, less energy problems. This is maybe just a personal thing, but it also fits in with um, energy. There's a lot of really bad drivers out there and I'm kind of sick of it. So let's just say that bad drivers are equally distributed through the genders. But I think if we ban women from driving, that would at least solve a hefty amount of traffic congestion, smog, and bad drivers. There are countries out there that have already banned women drivers. I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. I think it's called Sharia law. I think even if we take a little Sharia law here, we could even just experiment and try it first now on Asians. I don't really see why. Like, I have this whole computer system right now. This whole computer system is taking up a lot of energy. There are countries out there that ban the internet. Why aren't we one of them? What are we doing? Letting everyone access fake news? <laughs> Bad opinions? The other thing that the internet ban would do, <laughs> listen, first I need to recognize the heroes of the internet. There are people fighting hard to protect us from things that could hurt our feelings. And I love it. And I commend those people for working so hard for my safety and your safety and everyone's safety of banning certain people. But I don't know if it goes far enough. So I think the, the internet censorship would be a really a good move you know, in the right direction. I think that the government probably knows better than I do. So the government should shut uh, the internet down and just just let us know what we should know. You know, CNN, that's it. You can access CNN. And this gets into the next problem of the country, which is safety and safe spaces. I know we're all striving for it, but I think if we get further on board with treating everyone equally. But this is also juxtaposed next to however you want to act is fine. If you want to protest in the street or throw milkshakes on people or be intimidating and wear black masks and, and approach people, they should still treat you with respect, you know? So you should be able to act however you want. And then also people should treat you with as much dignity, dignity and respect as a nun, but they're Christian. So they're kind of, they shouldn't be treated that great. I don't know, as a Muslim, I want to feel safe when I'm dating someone and really everyone should feel safe in that. And how can you feel safe when you feel discriminated against for who you are? There are some people, you're probably not going to even believe this, but there are some people who don't want to date a tranny. That's really, really unkind to the tranny. So I think maybe if it would be a safe thing, if it was like a first come first serve, whoever approaches you, maybe you don't find them attractive. Maybe they're not physically the way you want them to be. Maybe they think differently than you. Maybe they only wear a black mask and approach you with, with crowbars. But if they're attracted to you, or if they're a tranny, or if they're a white man, ugh, I know, but we're looking for a quality here. So whoever approaches you, get over your phobias and date who wants to date you. This goes for jobs too. I want to feel I want to feel safe like I could possibly get the job that I want. So maybe instead of meritocracy, 
which, which is totally unfair. You know, some people have more skills than other people. Why should they be discluded? That's not safe. So who, I think it's like a first come first serve for jobs as well. The only issue I can see with that is like maybe the strongest and most violent would get their resume in first. We can work around this, but I think I'm onto something and I think you know I am. The, one of the biggest the, one of the biggest problems with this country is the lack of equality that everyone has. This is my favorite because I have the best ideas for equality. First of all, we all know that healthcare should be free. I mean, this is what the left is running on. All hail the left. They're on to something. So free healthcare. And the thing with equality with healthcare is if you have one centralized healthcare system, what's more equal than everyone being the same health? So I think eventually the government can say, hey, don't eat this, eat this. You have to work out for X amount of time. So everyone is like the same fitness level. And that will really weed out a lot of the the issues. We might have to close McDonald's. Um, we might have to we might have to make some changes. But I think if the government could come in and say, "Look, this is what our scientists have found. For every body type, they require X, Y, and Z. And if you can't do it, then well, I don't know. Everyone sh- everyone should be able to. We're all equal. We're all equal. Let's act like it." This takes me to just kind of a personal gripe, but it really fits in with healthcare. When I go to the grocery store, there's blah, there's just way too many salad dressing options, and it's annoying. And it's annoying to me also because not everyone owns a salad dressing company. Like there's some individuals, probably white, who have thought up an idea and gotten funding and you know went through all this work to create these salad dressing companies, but it just confuses me. So if the government just ran the salad dressings, for that matter, everything, but let's just start with salad dressings. And the thing is, we could really have fun with the namings of it. We could keep them political. Um, Caesar dressing would stay just named Caesar. We could name French, French sucks. It could be a thousand American owned island dressing. Italian suck. We could rename Russian dressing and just call it Russian collusion. There's a salad dressing called Green Goddess. Let's rename it to what we all already know. It should be called Women Are Better. But then, see, if the government owns the salad dressings, they might find that there's way too many calories. So we could just have an American dressing, it could like vinegar. It could just be vinegar. And then when you go to get your salad dressing, you know they're equal to everyone. You're getting the same health benefits as American dressing, just white vinegar. I don't know. These are these are just ideas, but if the government's listening, I think you know I'm onto something. So this is another thing that's coming up with the left, and I think it's a really good idea, free education. And here's why I think it's a good idea. This is how it plays out in my head. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. Certain degrees are worth more than others. So there's scientists that are probably more helpful than someone with a lesbian dance theory. And right now, everyone has, again, the salad dressing choice, too many choices of what do I want to be when I grow up? And that's very overwhelming. But at a certain point, the government is going to say, hey, I don't think that that the taxpayers, the government really, should be paying for certain degrees. And we have a shortage of X careers. So everyone in 2021, all the freshmen are going to go to school for this. And they can place us where they need us to contribute best to society. And I think that's beautiful. Now, once you've been, once you've been mandated to a certain profession, you're going to get don't worry, you're going to get a minimum wage. Maybe they think that you're best for doing, you know, uh, hamburger work or something. You will get a minimum wage. Here's why. Companies can afford to pay you. And if they can't, there are two things. They're lying to you. They're lazy. And they just need to figure out how to bring in more revenue to pay you more money. They'll figure it out. On the flip side of that, there should be a minimum tax. And I let's say it's $1,000 a month. So every American pays $1,000 a month. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking some people can't afford that. But it's the same thing with the minimum wage. The people that can't afford it, either they're lazy or they should figure out a way to make more money to give to the pool of, of other Americans. 
and don't worry. This is the this is the US government we're talking about. They know what to do with our money. They know. You think you're so smart. Well, maybe if you go to school and they tell you what to be smart about, you don't know better than the government. Kamala Harris knows better than you. Bernie Sanders, AOC, all these people. <laughs> I, it wouldn't even be such a bad idea if right now, if you're only paying like $200 a month in in income taxes, send another 800, just make a personal check to AOC or Kamala Harris and say, hey, what should I do with this money? Because they might know someone in a different state or something, or someone that needs an abortion to to help to help them. So this is this is a quality and I really, really like it. My only problem partnered up with a solution, a good solution, some stupid, greedy, probably white people are going to not like my ideas. They're going to die at some point. They're going to get old and die. The way that we can make this work is through the compulsory education system. We get people when they're young K to 12, 15,000 hours, we tell them what to think. We tell them what the rules are. We tell them why it's best. And we can take this country back. We can be great, not again, but for the first time through equality, environmental ideas and initiatives and creating safer spaces. So that's it. You know, just take some of these ideas and think about them this 4th of July when you listen to the PTSD-inducing fireworks to celebrate this great country. Think about my ideas and know that we, we can change this. So everyone, thank you for real. Have a good 4th of July. If you like any of my ideas, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs>